This is part one in the Craftsman King Sealy 100 Series Drill Press Rebuild Series. If you haven't seen any of my other videos, I recommend the 150 Rebuild Series. In this video, I'm going to go over the background of this drill press and how to evaluate it. Hello everyone, I'm Jeff and welcome to my shop. We got a lot to cover, so let's get to it. This is a 1951 Craftsman King Sealy 15 and a half inch 100 series floor standing drill press. Model number 103.23141. This drill press is actually a transition drill press. It was made in late 1951. And in 1952 and in 1953, all of the 100 series drill presses were shipped without a headband on the head. Some of the 52-53 machines had painted parts that were normally chrome, like the feed hub, the feed stop bracket, the feed tension knob, and the quill lock handle were painted gray on some of these machines. And one of the ways that we can identify what year these drill presses were made usually is the accompanying motor will have a date code on it. And this one has a date code of December 1951. Although these drill presses were not sold with motors, most people bought the motor at the same time. So this is going to be an interesting rebuild series. It's probably going to take more than 10 videos to get us from start to finish, but it should be an interesting journey and uh, we'll have some fun doing it. In 1946, Craftsman began selling the 100 series drill press Prior to 46, Craftsman drill presses were manufactured by the Atlas Press Company and the Walker Turner Company. During these two manufacturing lines of drill presses, several mechanical and technological advances were patented. These advancements were incorporated in the design of the 100 series drill press. The King Sealy Corporation assumed manufacturing of the Craftsman drill press line in 1946. And the complete King Sealy Craftsman drill press lineup included a 12.5 inch bronze bearing benchtop drill press, a 13 and a half inch ball bearing benchtop drill press, and both floor standing and benchtop versions of the 15 and a half inch heavy duty drill press. In 1948, the 15 and a half inch heavy duty drill press was officially named the 100 drill press. Confusingly, the 13 and a half inch ball bearing drill press was also named the 100 drill press. The 12.5 inch drill press was named the 80 drill press and the new 9 inch drill press was named the 40 drill press. In 1950, the King Sealy drill press lineup went through another renaming. The 15 and a half inch drill press would remain the 100 series. The 13 and a half inch with its iconic single feed handlebar would become the 80 series and the 12 and a half inch and 9 inch drill presses would become the Dunlap drill presses. And that's all we're really going to talk about on the smaller size drill presses. From this point forward, we're going to be focusing on the 15 and a half inch 100 series. The 15 and a half inch Craftsman King Sealy 100 drill press was manufactured from 1946 through 1957. These models are easily identified by the hub with three feed handles. And for most of those years of production, there's a headband on the head that's engine turned, has a unique pattern. During the 11 year run, we would see three significant changes to the line. The first two changes occurred in 1952 or late 1951, as is the case with this drill press. The Jacobs chuck would be upgraded to a safety lock collar Jacobs chuck that ensured the chuck would remain mounted to the spindle when lateral force was applied. The second change was the omission of the engine turned headband for two years, 1952 and 1953. And all of these drill presses during that time period shipped without the headband. Additionally, many of these drill presses had their chrome parts painted. So the feed hub, the feed stop bracket, the feed tension knob, and the quill lock handle were all painted gray on some of these models. In 1954, 
the headbands returned, as well as the chrome parts. The third change took place in 1956 with the replacement of the tilting table. Although the tilting table would remain an optional accessory for the 100 line, it was replaced with a non-tilting table that would carry over to the 150 series. 1957 was the final year of production of the 100 series drill press. It was replaced with an upgraded, updated design that included a tilting motor mount, an improved quill with locking ring, and an improved quick adjustment feed stop collar. The new design would be called the 150 and can easily be identified by the changed single piece headband that clearly says 150 on it. So that's a brief background on the 100 series. Hopefully that made sense and I didn't just ramble. I've already done an evaluation video and I'll put a link here for it. But on this drill press, what we're really just going to be doing is identifying the issues with it. And the first thing we're going to look at is this bolt here. It's the wrong size. That means somebody's tapped the head and put a larger bolt in there. The feed tension knob and the quill lock as well as the feed stop bracket. The chrome had been painted over. And not a whole lot of play there. The whole drill press was shaking, but you can see that the spring wasn't tensioned properly because that quill was not all the way up. And here I'm just looking to see if the machine bolts or the machine screws are in there. That's what holds the spindle pulley assembly in the head casting. Next, that pulley on the motor is the wrong size. It looks like it's about a three inch on the largest sheave and it's supposed to be five inches. And that head lock handle is actually on the wrong side. And here I'm just checking to see if the locking pin for the tilt table is present. And of course the table surface is horrible. And these two feed stop collars are incorrect. So there's a, a gap larger than it should be where the pinion is coming out of the head and connecting with the hub. And that is because the locking screw that goes on the bottom of the head and holds the pinion in the head is missing, as well as a fiber washer for that. I'm also missing the chuck key. So it looks like I've got my work cut out for me. And this series will probably be more than 10 videos. So this first one is short and I apologize for that, but uh, the next video will get to disassembly. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please like and subscribe. As always, I appreciate the support and I will see you next time.